Fireman Sam and the Magnifying Glass. It was a bright summer's day. Mrs Chen had taken the children on a scientific field trip, counting the numbers of different species they could find to a project on the ecosystem or something. Norman Price had chosen to count ants, and whilst the other children proceeded to use quadrants, Norman had brought with him a magnifying glass to make the task an easier one, certainly considering his myopic vision and the diminutive size of his chosen wildlife. Fireman Sam had just sat down to watch a place in the sun when the station phone rang. Station Officer Steele took the call and interrupted Sam's appreciation of Laura Hamilton. Isn't that the girl from Dartford, although born in Greenwich, according to her Wikipedia entry, who was runner-up on Dancing on Ice in 2011? inquired Station Officer Steele. Apparently she can't decide whether she likes it hot or cold, that girl. Much like the ants on the score field trip. Living in Ponty Pandy, but being warmed up by Norman Price's magnifying glass. That was Mrs Chen on the landline. She needs some support before the Ponty Pandy ecosystem is consumed by a giant fireball. Action stations, men. And me, added Penny. Fireman Sam grabbed some appropriate diagrams and joined his compatriots as they slid down the pole to the engine below. Stop that, cried Fireman Sam to Norman as he approached Mrs Chen, her daughter Lily and the other children engaging in scientific exploration. Don't you see how your magnifying glass is concentrating the sun's radiation, creating a hotspot at the focus and in the process endangering the lives of hundreds of Pontipandian insects? Plus you might start a fire. Norman put down his magnifying glass and, his top lip all a quiver, blurted, I just wanted to get a precise figure for my report. Fireman Sam gathered the children on the grass and talked through the ideas behind continuous random variables, using his diagrams as visual aids. The time it takes to fry an ant to a crisp, which I do not condone whatsoever, can be modelled using this probability distribution function. As you can see, although the PDF is well defined, we don't yet know the value of k. However, since the area beneath the curve is equal to 1, we can use integration to calculate it. Note that the sketch has boldification for the values of x outside the domain of our PDF, and that we have a quick visual interpretation of the mode. Sometimes you'll need to use differentiation to locate a turning point, but not in this instance. Should you wish to find the mean and or variance, then these are the formula you need. As you can see, I have already performed the sums. And if instead you want to find the median or quartiles, then you need to find the cumulative distribution function, capital Fx. Simply integrate between the lower bound and the variable x, and you get your formula, as shown. You'll also need rows for 0 and 1 when you write your definition. To find the median, you just put your expression equal to a half and solve. If for any reason the equation can't be solved, you could verify the root to any number of decimal places by using lower and upper bounds. And so you can see from our statistical analysis that as well as being cruel, it's very dangerous, like going out to sea on your own. Mrs Chen thanked Fireman Sam for his well-targeted talk and took the children back to the school so that they could download past pupils' reports and plagiarise them.